Today, I'm gonna to show you the easiest way to replace the sky in your images using artificial intelligence. Hey there, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And I'm so excited about today's episode for a couple of reasons. First is that AI or artificial intelligence has been around for a little bit and it's starting to make its way into mainstream editing and it's getting really, really powerful. Now we're featuring a piece of software today called Luminar 4 that basically does things like retouching skin and even sky replacements completely automatically using artificial intelligence. Now, I've always been a little bit skeptical of AI because I like to do things manually. I don't usually like to give up that control, but I think where Luminar has done a really good job is they have a lot of those AI tools built in, but you can still go in and make fine tune adjustments and make things look the way you want them. Now, I do wanna say that this video is sponsored by Luminar 4. They sent us the software and was like, hey, what do you think of this software? Uh, and I'm like, well, I wanna give my honest opinion. Personally, I'm a Photoshop user and I have been for a long time. So for me to just like pick up a completely new piece of software, it's gotta be pretty compelling. But one of the cool things about Luminar is that it's not at all supposed to be a replacement for Photoshop or Lightroom. There's actually a plugin, so if you wanna just bring this into your Photoshop or Lightroom workflow, that works totally well. So it's also just a one-time payment. There's no subscription fee, so once you get it, uh, it's yours forever, which is super cool. And we have an exclusive discount for you in the link right down below. So you can save $25 on Luminar 4 today, following our link. All right, let's go ahead and get started showing you how to replace these skies incredibly quickly. So here's our first image in Photoshop. I want to replace this guy. It's super simple at this point. So we're going to go ahead and load up our Luminar plugin. We're just going to first, before we use any plugins or any type of presets or any filters in Photoshop, it's always a great idea to turn your layer into a smart object. So here in my background, I'm just going to double click on the background and hit OK. Then we're going to right click and we're going to convert this to a smart object. That way I can change this at any point if I want to. So we're gonna go up to Filter and then down here to Skylum Software and over to Luminar 4. Now, whether you guys are using Luminar 4 as a plugin or as a standalone, it works the exact same and it looks the exact same. So it's super easy integration from one to the other. All right, now you do have all kinds of presets here on the bottom and it's kind of cool because it automatically knows it's a landscape. So it loads in the landscape presets and you can click on any of these and you know, like change the amount, like how much or how little you'd like these effects to be added. Kind of similar to how like a Lightroom preset would work for instance. Okay, now I'm gonna go back in here in my history. We're just gonna go back to our open state. Of course, we have all kinds of really great editing tools like this AI accent. Basically, it's just like kind of an auto slider that actually works really well. Just takes a look at, you know, your highlights and shadows and contrast in your image and basically just allows you to pretty much improve your image with one slider, which I think is really, really cool. Now, what we're gonna be focusing on here is this creative tab and more specifically the AI sky replacement. So this is one of those things where sky replacement is not actually that easy to do because even if you do a great job cutting out your sky and replacing it with a new one, you have to match the lighting. And that is, in my opinion, where this program actually comes in really handy because you can relight your scene based on your new sky. So let's go ahead and hear where it says sky selection. We're just gonna click on that little drop down, and you can see we have all these skies that come loaded with this program. So you can see like blue skies, there we go, and it automatically relights your scene. Now, my advice here is to try to choose a sky that actually fits the mood and like is close enough to the original sky. So if we go back here to the original sky, we can see it's kind of like a cloudy, kind of like a little bit of a dark sky. So, you know, like a bright blue sky in this case wouldn't really make sense. So we'll try with some dramatic skies. There we go, dramatic sky one, two, just kind of loading through them. And you'll notice as I click on these different skies, my foreground is getting completely lit as well. Now that's actually looking really good. Let's go ahead in here to my advanced settings. And I wanna take a look at a few of these. One, uh, this relight scene. This, you can see, bring this back and forth. It makes a pretty substantial difference in my scene. Before and after, I mean, I gotta say the after looks a lot better. It's taking some of the light and some of the color from the sky and applying that onto the foreground, which is really, really cool. 
Now we have tools like horizon blending, which we can use to kind of like fade this away a little bit. Like if it's too sharp towards the horizon, uh, in this case, it is just a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and fade that up a little bit. Fantastic. But you can see it puts the sky in the right place. It actually uses auto detect uh, for your horizon to place the sky as well. Now you can also do things like add a little bit of atmospheric haze, which in this case makes some sense because our original image had that. And you can adjust your sky exposure, which again is just gonna adjust your exposure of the entire image because we are relighting the scene. Now, if it's out of focus, you can go ahead and just like, you know, change your focus on the sky. And of course you can flip this horizontally if you want, but I think that looks really good. Now you have settings here for closed gaps and sky local. We're gonna show you that in the next example. Basically that's like if you have trees or anything with fine detail, uh, that's where you can, uh, you know, basically like make sure that it's gonna include all of the detail in the foreground and do a nice job blending. So really that actually looks pretty good and you can see it took almost no time. So let's go ahead and hit apply here and it just takes a second to apply the filter. I think pretty much anyone could get a great sky replacement very quickly with the software. So um, in terms of that, got my support. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. The thing that I like about this workflow, again, is that it's a smart object. So I can just turn this off and on at any time and see my before and after, which is super helpful. So let's go ahead and do another example, which is just a little bit more intense, where we actually have some more detail in the sky. So we're gonna bring in our second example here. Let's just click and drag straight into Photoshop. Again, I love that I can just stay in Photoshop. I'm used to Photoshop. I love Photoshop for all of its tools and Luminar just kind of like gives me more tools in Photoshop. That's kind of how I look at it. So this image again, looks great, but you can see we have a lot more in the sky. We have detail here in the trees and things like that. So it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to replace this sky. Let's see how it does. So again, I just wanna double click on my background to make it a regular layer and then right click and convert that to a smart object. Super important. We're gonna to go to filter, Skylum software and over to Luminar 4 and do our sky replacement. So it just starts the plugin, basically just loads the program up and you're good to go. So we're gonna go back here to our creative tab, AI sky replacement and take a look at a couple of different skies. Now we have these bright blue skies that are loaded up. The kind of cool thing about uh, Skylum software is that they actually like went out and photographed a lot of really beautiful skies. So you can use any of these skies here, but you can also just go to download new sky images and it takes you to their website and then you can just get packs of skies, which is fantastic. Um, but you're not limited there. You can just use any sky that you want. Now, all of these images in this tutorial are gonna be available for download on flurn.com. So you can just click on the link right down below and download them, and then you can follow along. By the way, uh, Skylum has a seven day free trial of Luminar 4 also. So not only can you download these sample images, but you can get a free trial of Luminar so you can follow along and see if it's for you. Uh, I wanna load my own image though, right? Like that's the whole thing is like, what about if you photograph a really cool sky and you wanted to put in your images, you can actually do that really easily. So let's go ahead here and we're just going to go all the way to the bottom to load custom sky image. There we go. Now you can load your own sky image in here. I've already got one already picked out. So let's just go ahead and click there and drag it in there. This I just downloaded from Pexels, okay? So you can use stock images, you can use your own images. Really, there's no limit to what you can do here. It's gonna automatically find your horizon. It's gonna basically take care of everything for you. So again, this is, I'm literally just using, you know, this sky that I pulled off of Pexels and it did it all for me. Let's go ahead and click on advanced settings. I'm gonna zoom in here and see how it did with like the trees. Honestly, I don't really need to do that much of adjustments. Like it's putting it even in these little cracks and crevices, like all around those tree details here. You can see it's, I mean, pretty dang good. If I really, really zoom in, let's go ahead a little bit more. You can see, there's just a little area that we wouldn't want to clean up there. I mean, a 200% zoom, but we're just going to go to this close gaps. Let's see, I'm just going to crank this a little bit higher there. There we go. And you can see it's looking a little bit better. We're just going to bring up sky local, which basically this is just taking care of like small local details here. That's, that's what these sliders are for. All right, there we go. And we can see it's done a really, really nice job. Let's go ahead and just bring that up just a little bit more. It's done a really, really nice job basically taking care of those gaps. So let's go ahead and zoom out. There we go. And 
I gotta say, this is really, really, especially the fact that you can load in your own, let's bring up, you can load in your own images, super cool. And then of course, if you wanna just uh, switch it up and maybe go for a sunset type image, there you go. And you can see it completely recolored my image. Now I will say just a general piece of advice, whenever you're doing sky replacement, whether you're using this software or anything else, just pay attention to the angle of the light. So you can see here in our main image, we have a relatively hard shadow on the ground and the sunlight is coming from like the right hand side. Okay, so it's like kind of from the top and from the right a little bit. You can see that shadow is going right there. Okay, now on this image, this sunset two image, the sun is coming from behind these uh, mountains, right? Like you can see it's way back there, it's backlighting this cloud. So that's really never gonna work. And that has nothing to do with this program. It's simply the angle of the sun and the atmospheric settings of the sky that you choose. So I, just don't force it, basically. Click on a few different ones. You can see this is way too like cloudy, right? And the sun is way back there. So that's why it doesn't really look that good here. It's because it's a, it's a sky that really doesn't fit the scene. These are all great skies, but if they don't fit the scene, it's, it's never gonna work. See all these dramatic sunsets? You'd want an image that's backlit for these to work. So again, we're gonna try these like bright blue skies. Something like this actually starts to work a little bit. Okay, there we go. Let's try another one, bright blue sky number two. This one works really well as well because you can imagine the sky would, the sun would just be straight down. So that's kind of like the big thing here is just making sure you choose the right sky. This one actually looks really great. I, I really like this one. Uh, we can flip this back and forth to see where we'd like it. Um, I'm gonna just go ahead and relight the scene a little bit more. You can see it just kind of like brings everything together. Um, and I think that works really well. So all we have to do is hit apply and you're good to go. So what are my overall impressions? One, I think it's really cool that Luminar is doing all this AI or artificial intelligence stuff. Uh, it's working really well. I mean, the fact that we were able to do that sky replacement in like almost no time is absolutely fantastic. Now there was this like tiny little area here that just like kind of wasn't 100% perfect, but that's actually not that big of a deal because we're in Photoshop. So for instance, if I take a new layer and I just grab my clone stamp tool, okay, I'm just gonna go with the current and below here. There we go. I can just sample the sky here and just do like a little bit of fill in. You can see this is gonna take like, you know, just a minute or two, just kind of like clean up this little area. Way, way less time than this would take if I was actually, you know, had to do the entire thing manually. There we go. And you can see, I'm not even using like a pressure sensitive tablet here, which I normally would use a Wacom tablet. I just, I'm using a mouse. <laughs> so even with a mouse, very, very simple editing tools. You can see, I'm just grabbing the clone stamp and cleaning this up here on a new layer. There we go. Very, very simple and easy. Couple of seconds and we're good to go. So able to clean that up, no problem. And there we go. We're completely done. So some cool things here. Uh, this program, they got a seven day free trial. So may as well just give it a shot and download it. Using the link down below, you guys can actually save 25 bucks on Luminar. So the following the link down below, you can get it for 64 bucks instead of 89, which is fantastic. And of course, my favorite feature is that it's not really trying to be a competitor of Photoshop or Lightroom. It works really well with both Photoshop or Lightroom and has its own standalone. So no matter what workflow you're currently using, Luminar is pretty good at working its way right into your current workflow. And as you can see, sky replacement in almost no time works really well. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I'm personally super impressed with everything that AI is doing across the board and to see that you can do sky replacements basically automatically kind of blows my mind. I'd love to know your thoughts. Leave them in a comment down below. Thanks again. I'll flirt you later. Bye everyone.